So Ether Gazer has been out for a few days now, and I've been pretty much playing it non-stop. This game was created by the same developers who are behind Azure Lane and Ark Knights, and you've probably heard of the latter if you've been playing gacha games. And so, in this video, I am going to showcase you what Ether Gazer is all about. Today's video is sponsored by Yostar, which I'm really grateful for, and I've actually been having a blast trying it out. So what is Ether Gazer about? Well, it's an action-packed, fast-paced RPG where you get to collect characters known as modifiers and use their abilities to wipe your enemies away. Now, I'm never great with the lore, but from what I I understand, the basic premise of the game is that the world as we know it has gone through a catastrophe and the remaining survivors uploaded their consciousness to a data network, hoping to live a nice and peaceful life in the virtual world. But then some kind of a creature called Visbane shows up and puts everyone in danger. And so the characters were virtual programs, also known as modifiers. They join under your control and you are the administrator of the organization you work for that's called, well, Ethergazer. But anyway, where do I even start with this game? The characters, the gacha, the gameplay? Let's talk about all of this in today's videos, starting with gameplay. So as you can see here, I am dishing out some really cool combos right now with my character on the field, and basically each character comes with three skills, one ultimate and one dodge skill. There's a couple of major mechanics in the game, one of which is called a modifier mode. You basically build this up by attacking enemies, and you can also clearly see the modifier mode bar on the boss here, and once you reach it, time slows down, you're transported to this some kind of a special area, and the enemies are no longer able to do anything, and then you're just dishing out a lot of damage and once the modifier mode is over, even more damage is dealt to the enemy. Now there's actually quite a few ways you can play around this modifier mode, which I'll talk about later when I show you my teams, but another cool thing is that when you're building up your combos, you can see the ranking on the left side, which goes from C, B, A, S, and then Omega ranking. Once you reach one of these rankings, you actually obtain some cool bonuses. For example, this thing called Mod Index Multiplier Gain Rate, basically this means you can build up the modifier mode bar quicker, and then attack here is just additional damage you get to do to enemies. What's also interesting is that even though you build a team of three characters, you actually get to control only one. The other two that stay on the field, you're only able to trigger their ultimates when they're ready, but otherwise they just have a mind of their own. One cool thing about the teammates you bring to the field is that some of the characters share a synergy, and you can actually unleash ultimate skill chains. For example, this team I'm using right now, these two guys have an ultimate skill chain, and once I trigger it, you get to see this really cool animation of them performing their ultimates together. This ultimate skill chain also combines their effects. So for example, Apollo here, his ultimate will reset the dodge cooldown for all characters, while Tyr's ultimate will also boost the ultimate skill damage. It's a really cool way to build your teams focusing around their ultimate skill chains, but there are definitely more elements at play here, which again, I'll talk about in a moment here. But yeah, the combat in this game feels really great, there's a large variety of enemies, your attacks can easily stagger them, and the visual and audio feedback I get when I hit enemies feels really good. A lot of enemies have different attack patterns, and there are some really cool bosses as well. I think I'm halfway through the available story right now, and I met this really cool centaur with a pole arm, and then there's also this tank boss. What's really interesting about this tank boss is that you get to pick their own upgrades. Basically, when you beat up this tank, it will disappear, and then two upgrades show up. The one upgrade you destroy, the other one will be applied to the tank, so you get to choose like how to build this tank in your fight, and then you of course have to defeat it. And speaking of attack patterns, as long as you time your dodge at the right time, you will also activate the dodge skill. Now, each character actually has different dodge skill abilities, most of them will slow down time, uh, some of them will recover resources, and in this game, characters have different resources. For example, the one I'm using here right now, her resource is Divine Grace. And so for her, if you build up the Divine Grace, she will also transform one of her skills into a stronger version, which is a really cool thing. But there are characters who build up their rage, some of them use traces, but there's like a small resource economy you need to play around in using the characters. And speaking of characters, I think they're fleshed out really well in this game. Every one of them has a tutorial that I recommend going through. It gives you a good explanation on how to use them and how they work. Work. And for example, the starter character I'm using, she's actually my favorite right now, because the whole thing about her is that you can actually spam her first skill, because each time you use her second or third skill, the cooldown of the first skill is reset, so her playstyle for me is really fun, and I really like going back and forth just spamming her first skill. Now, team building in this game is pretty robust. I have three teams right now that I have built, uh, for example, the first team here. I already showed you that these two guys have their ultimate skill chain, but also each character belongs to a different gen zone. 
And if you put in the modifiers from the same gen zone, you will start unlocking some really powerful bonuses. For example, in this team, both of these characters are from the Yggdrasil gen zone, and so when the team enters into the modified mode, everyone's combat resources like rage, energy, and so on will be restored to the maximum, and will also increase their resource charge as well. Now, I also have another team, where all three characters are from the same gen zone called Asterism, and these bonuses are actually kinda insane. So for the modified mode bonus, enemies will take more damage, and the sustained combat bonus, which as I understand will be active at all times, it increases all of the modifier's defense piercing damage by a fixed percentage. Now, sadly, nobody in the team can perform an ultimate skill chain, so everyone's ultimates are separate, but this means you can still trigger everyone's ultimates, even the two companions you bring into the fight. So it's not that big of a deal, and in fact, Asura here, her ultimate will reduce enemies' fire resistance, while this guy called, I think his name is Nuadha, he also deals fire damage, so that means he will deal more fire damage thanks to Asura. Now, the final team I have here, everyone is from the same gen zone, and there is an ultimate skill chain between these two modifiers. But there's actually one character I want to get from the gacha system, and I'll actually be able to use her ultimate skill chain with one of these characters as well. So the character I want to get is Shinri Tsukuyomi. She is a limited character, and this is her featured banner. There's also a standard banner, and when you start the game, there's a special beginner banner where you can get an S grade modifier by just doing 40 pulls. And the game actually showers you with a lot of summons, so it's super easy to go for that beginner banner and unlock one S grade modifier immediately. There's also a Functor banner. Functors in this game basically act as like weapon upgrades upgrades, since each character only has one weapon, you cannot change their weapons, but you can apply a functure to their weapon, and some of these functures have game-changing abilities, so it's kind of an interesting system, I guess. But yeah, let me just skip the whole summoning session, and hopefully I can get Shinri by just using my summoning currency, which I've obtained by clearing the story, and by claiming the launch rewards. Okay, so this is actually kind of funny, I was on my last 10 pull, and I actually got two S-grade modifiers, so I'm super hyped about this. Now, before I show you her gameplay, I just want to quickly go over and show you how to grow the character's power. So yeah, first of all, you can just level them up, then you can level their skills, and then the axis key here, as I said before, this is the modifier's weapon, and then in this slot here, you can put in the functor. For example, this functor here, not only does it provide flat attack boost, but the power increases the critical rate by 8%, which is pretty awesome. There's also sigils you can equip, which are like artifacts, and finally, the most interesting part, is that for each modifier, you can imprint different codes, which is basically their talent tree. So for example, Shinri here has 9 different codes, and as you keep upgrading her, you will unlock different codes, and then you can select up to 3 of them and activate, and all of them provide some game-changing abilities. So there's a lot of different ways how you can just build a character and then activate their different codes. It's a really interesting mechanic. Oh, and of course, one last thing I need to mention here is that even though the characters have different rankings, for example, Shinri starts at S rank, there's also B and A rank modifiers, you can actually transcend their ranks. So from B rank to all the way to the Omega rank, which you can do this by obtaining their shards. Uh, shards are mainly pulled from the gacha system, but there's actually many events where they just simply give out the shards. For example, if you do all of the beginner missions from start to finish, you will be able to achieve the Omega rank for Poseidon. And as I mentioned before, my favorite modifier, which is the starting one, you also get her shards for free. And in this case, I just have to increase my account level, and I will get them for free. But yeah, for my final thoughts, as I'm showing you Shinri's gameplay, I think that Yostar put a lot of love and care into this game. The character animations are quite stunning, to be honest. I really like that everyone has their own specific animation for dodging. Like some of these characters do somersaults, others produce ice when they dodge, it's a really cool thing. And while I haven't really talked about this much, the game does have quite a few different gameplay modes, like there's a boss mode, there's also a roguelike mode, where you just pick up different upgrades as you go along, and plenty more modes. Overall, I think the game is really fun, especially if you enjoy action RPGs, and I highly recommend checking out the game by using my link in the description, because there's also a ton of rewards waiting for you. Aethergazer reached 600,000 pre-registrations, and basically within the first day, half a million downloads. So you can literally just start the game and get a ton of free summons, and as I mentioned before, there's a guaranteed S rank modifier banner, and all you have to do is just make 40 pulls, which is super easy. So yeah, make sure to check out Ether Gazer. it's available on both Android and iOS, so make sure to download the game, help support my channel, and thanks for watching the video.